All right. Well, here we are. Another episode of Scientology Fair Game. Um, Mike, you notice that I'm talking in a little bit more calmer voice. Well, people, Leah, I think that they like your regular voice. I saw a a ton of comments (laughs) about, we love Leah and we love her passion and we love to hear her. You were the one that brought up I sound crazy or whatever it was that you yeah. said. Yeah. And yeah. I brought yeah. up I sound slow and then there's a whole bunch of people saying, no, you talk too fast. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> you can't win. <laughs> you can't win. Today we're going to talk about really the meat and, and substance of what is fair game and uh-huh. a little bit about the history because I don't think people have a clue how extensive and how long these practices have been going on in Scientology. Agreed. I I just think it's like it's become a couple of words and a a sentence or two that people think, ah, yeah, we know, fair game. Yeah, they attack enemies. Right. When you look back at the history of Scientology all the way back to the early 50s when Hubbard first started declaring people as enemies Mm -hmm. and his first enemies were the psychiatrists and medical doctors Mm -hmm. because they said that his great new discoveries were not in fact great new discoveries, but were quackery and that offended him no end. We see a history that is, it's almost too difficult to, to comprehend Mm -hmm. that what is portrayed as a religious organization has conducted very deliberate campaigns to destroy people for decades and infiltrate organizations. And I don't mean they have just been doing little smear tactics on the internet like they do on you and me currently. Mm -hmm. I mean real concerted campaigns to infiltrate government agencies to destroy people to just dis- we've heard and seen the story of Paulette Cooper but Paulette Cooper is just one one microcosm right. of this subject Correct. you know we go and and look at the prosecution of the Scientol- the 11 senior Scientologists from the Guardian's office, which was the the name previous name for the Office of Special Affairs, and the Guardian's office was that part of Scientology organization that L. Ron Hubbard said was to defend Scientology against outside attacks. Right. The the prosecution of those eleven officials, including L. Ron Hubbard's wife, Mary Sue, mm-hmm. and they're subsequent going to jail after yep. pleading guilty. And this is in 1977. The government, the FBI, they conducted a raid, right, on Scientology. And this is, was the results. They uncovered all of Scientology's guardian's office, now OSA. Um, they, they, they found all these documents that they were infiltrating government agencies. They had broken the law. Uh, to a point where, like you're saying, that resulted in 11 Scientologists going to prison. Correct. Yeah. And let me ju- let me just say, Leah, the backstory to why that raid even occurred is a fascinating one, and that the documents that were obtained by the U.S. government, the FBI, when they did those raids in Los Angeles and Washington D.C., yeah, uh, by no means all the documents that right. The Guardian's office had a system called the Red Box, what is which that? was the box that items that were considered to be secret or uh, problematic or could cause uh, difficulties were yeah. to be put into this box immediately, and every day that box was to be shredded. Uh. So there was huge amounts of material that right. was never gotten by the government. Right. But what was gotten <laughs> was so incriminating, it mm-hmm. is astonishing. And I think that we got to make the point, too, that these things that were uncovered in that raid and then mm-hmm. came out in this prosecution mm-hmm. are 
from the 70s, 60s, and 70s, primarily the 70s. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that this stuff has stopped. Right. Because they were all based on Hubbard's directives and policies on how you go about dealing with enemies. And none of those things have changed since. Right. The, right. The, right. The, the practice of how you deal with an enemy has not changed. So let, let me just go back and sure, explain a, a little bit. What had happened was the, the Hubbard had written this, this famous or infamous series of things called Snow White, the Snow White Program. And the Snow White Program was Hubbard's effort to deal with governmental, quote, attacks on Scientology. Now, when you say attacks, Mike, you don't mean that the the government was actually attacking. The government no. was doing their job by looking into Scientology abusive and criminal behavior. Or not even looking into it. They just had, uh, quote, false information, unquote. But, but, Mike, they had information on Scientology. They obviously had information that was correct, and it wasn't false. I understand you're speaking for Scientology and being you know, tongue in cheek, but I just don't want people to misunderstand that there was nothing that the government was doing that was wrong. They were actually doing their job. And for that, Scientology said, you are fair game to us and we will try to destroy you and get those documents and destroy them. Absolutely correct. The Guardian's office had infiltrated spies into the United States government, into the IRS, the Department of Justice, into senators' offices, the Better Business Bureau, the American Psychiatric Association, the American Medical Association. I mean, the office of, of the postal inspector. I mean, it was like all over the place. And they the purpose had... of planting Scientologists and infiltrating these organizations is because these government agencies is to what? What's, what's the purpose of it, Mike? Well, the stated purpose was to locate all of the information that these government agencies had on and on Scientology, mm -hmm. and therefore, by locating it, be able to quote unquote correct it. But actually, what was happening was they were stealing it. They were, <laughs> they stealing were removing. The they were removing the documents from the files. So that the information that had been transmitted to the IRS about mm -hmm. Scientology financial crimes would mm -hmm. suddenly vanish. Right. Okay. Here's what happened, Leah. Yeah. One, two of the people who were the infiltrators in the IRS got caught. They right. got caught with their false identities. Oh. And wow. they were supposed to then report to be interrogated by whoever it was that was going to interrogate them. And okay. one of them, a guy by the name of Michael Meisner, mm -hmm. the Guardian's office, this happened in Washington, D.C. at the headquarters of the IRS. And okay. by the way, Scientology had bugged the conference rooms of the IRS so that they were listening in to the conferences that were being held about what were they going to do about Scientology. Wow. So that they would know the strategy that the IRS was employing in the legal cases so that they could then circumvent the strategies that the IRS was using. This is unfreaking real, Mike. Yeah, it, yeah. it is unreal. Yeah. This All is right. like this is like, you know, Jason Bourne stories. Yeah, yeah. But for real. Yeah, yeah. This is the <laughs> Okay, so Michael Meisner yeah. was He gets caught put on he gets caught, and instead yeah. of showing up for his interrogation and reporting in for the arrest warrant, he gets flown to Los Angeles so that they can figure out what are they going to do and what story are they going to come up with. You know, I have mentioned a few times that the way that Scientology deals with things is corral everything immediately and then figure out what the story is going to be and right. how are we going to deal with this and how we're going to tell this, this you know spread the lies and and uh so wait so instead of going to wh where he was supposed to go where he was supposed to be interviewed not interrogated interviewed by 
uh, what? The FBI. the FBI. Okay. Yep. Scientology flies him to Los Angeles. Right. To to drill him, to train him on what he's going to say that's a lie to protect Correct. Scientology. Okay, what happens from there? There is an arrest warrant that is issued for yeah. him because he doesn't show up. At this point, this goes on for some weeks. He is being hidden in Los Angeles in safe houses. By Scientology. By Scientology. So and the then, authorities can't get to him. Exactly. Yeah. Nobody knows where he is. So yeah, yeah. they can't get the evidence from him if they can't talk to him. Right. This is unreal. So Yeah. So Meisner then says, look, I don't want to be a fugitive with an arrest warrant on my head. I want to turn myself in. I want to go tell him, and they have concocted this whole, or they were in the process of concocting a whole story about what it was that had happened and why he was doing what he was doing and blah, blah, blah. And he said, I just want to go turn myself in. The Guardian's office officials from Mary Sue Hubbard on down said, no, you are not turning yourself in. And they kidnapped the guy. Scientology. They literally, the, the Guardian's office kidnapped their own guy. They tied him up, handcuffed him, put a tennis ball in his mouth, and put him in the back of a car, blindfolded, and drove him to another secret location where he didn't even know where he was and kept him there out of the hands of the government. He then played, ultimately got, sort of got smart and played nice with the people who were watching him, saying he was all cooperative and he wouldn't do anything bad and blah, blah, blah. They let down their guard and he jumped the fence and made his way to the FBI and spilled his guts. And told that, them the truth. That's exactly right. He spilled it. He laid out oh, everything so that had happened. That is how the FBI was able to go in and do the raid from what Michael Meisner Meisner, Meisner? did. Yeah. I exactly. Get you. I his, see. His his testimony was what allowed the FBI to then go get a search warrant from a federal judge in Los Angeles and DC and go in and do this raid. And that raid then resulted in all of these documents coming out and the prosecution of those 11 people. And those documents and, and this amazing, in the, in the course of the prosecution of those people from the Guardian's office, Mary Sue Hubbard and company, there was a stipulation of evidence that the defendants, Mary Sue mm. Hubbard and co., agreed to with the U.S. Attorney's Office, and it lays out all of the things that they agree that they had been engaged in. And it is uh, like infiltrating the BBB, doing, mm. you know, all of the things that I laid out. Mm -hmm. And then there is a, a fascinating document when the judge was supposed to be sentencing them, the United States Attorneys submitted what is called a sentencing memorandum to the court saying, mm -hmm. Here is how you should treat these people. And it lays out in enormous detail the fact that Scientology, based on the teachings of L. Ron Hubbard, believes itself to be above the law. Mm -hmm. That these people believe that they could lie, cheat, burgle, do anything that they wanted in order to justify achieving the goals and aims of Scientology and mm -hmm. what they have been told to do by L. Ron Hubbard. Mm -hmm. They couldn't charge L. Ron Hubbard. He was an unindicted co-conspirator in that case mm -hmm. because Mary Sue Hubbard fell on her sword and mm -hmm. so did the other Guardian's office people and said he knew nothing about anything that they were doing. Right. Well, of course that wasn't true. He had right. directed it all. Right. It just, all as, been... just as David Miscavige is doing today. Correct. And under I'm glad the, you under, raised that. Yes, under under the same policies of fair game that were written in 1955 that are still active today. Correct. Right. And we see examples of this exact same sort of stuff happening all over the place. Look, since since that prosecution, and one would imagine that when 11 senior officials of a quote-unquote church are convicted of or plead guilty, actually, to 
having infiltrated government agencies and burgled them, and all of this information comes out that 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 would be enough to cause them to stop. Not so. No. Right. They just became a little bit cleverer about how they went about doing it. And probably the biggest thing, Leah, that changed hmm. subsequent to that was instead of having Scientologists carrying out the dirty tricks, mm -hmm. the the infiltration, et cetera, et cetera, mm -hmm. it was all done with the cutout of lawyers. Mm -hmm. Lawyers hiring private investigators mm -hmm. who then hire someone else to go do the dirty work. Right. And before we move on, Mike, I just want to ask, so whatever happened to Michael? He is living life and has never spoken. He, really? He went off and, and okay. I think Tony Ortega tracked him down at one point. Yeah. He, living somewhere in, in New England okay. and working at a, uh, a nuclear power station, and he wouldn't talk. Interesting. I think he just, this, this whole part of his life was such a, such a catastrophe and disaster, he never wants to revisit it. I, I would understand. love to talk to him. No, and, and especially because he did so much good. I mean, I, I, but I would, uh, I would assume him seeing that Scientology, like you said, you would think that when this happened, that would be the end of fair game and these activities. But instead, the Guardian's Office of Scientology just became OSA, which stands for Office of Special Affairs. And like Mike said, the policy will never change, and so the activities that de demand uh, these activities will not change. They have just been altered. Um, but, you know, he's certainly um, somebody to be admired and thanked from, from our side for having the balls to do what he did, um, to do Ab the right thing. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Um, the other thing is, Mike, where can we see this story? Has this story ever been written? Have you written about this on your blog or... The, the story of Michael Meisner and the yeah. history of, mm -hmm. well, yeah. Tony, I think Tony Ortega has probably covered it more than anybody, but okay. I don't know that, I mean, in the book about Paulette Cooper is yeah. a lot of this information, okay. but I don't think anybody has ever directly talked about the history mm -hmm. of Fair Game and how this all sort of rolled out. Yeah, with... I'm glad you did. I'm glad you, you I didn't know this. Right. Uh, so it's really, it's really mind boggling that it continues to happen. And, and like you said, Mike, when they uncovered those documents, they had hundreds, if not thousands of illegal operations. Then that's what they call them. Operation Freakout uh, for the mayor of Clearwater. It was... Uh, what was Italian it? Italian fog and taco less. Yeah. Right. Like and so these were the operations and they're written out and you could certainly Google this. You could find these, uh, you could Scientology, dirty tricks, Scientology, fair game, operation freak out will lead you to the many, many operations of, uh, Sci Scientology's guardian's office and now OSA and what they're doing today. And look, we should actually get into Mike uh, so starting with, uh, when, when people go, well, it's not happening today, it's illegal. I mean, it is still happening. You don't have to go far. Uh, certainly you could start with us, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but please do look up these operations guys. Cause I just want you to see it for yourself. It's so important that, that you have the information that you're armed with the information and it's not just us saying it to you. We want you to be well-educated in the area of Scientology to avoid it for yourself and to, uh, if you're a judge or you're in law enforcement, it's so important that you understand the tactics that Scientology and Scientologists alike are willing to take to discredit or silence anyone who is um, exposing them. Right. And, and Leah, I mm -hmm. will put this like a, 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 there is a document that someone compiled. I don't even know who it is that yeah. lists out a lot of these operations and who they were against, et cetera, et cetera. And I'll put that on the fairgamepodcast.com website okay. when this episode airs so that people can see it. And along with the other documents, you know, the, that we've talked about the stipulation of evidence and the, the sentencing memorandum, et cetera, yes. et cetera. Okay, great.
So I think that this this story that I'm about to recount is illustrative of what goes on today. Mm -hmm. Like all the way to right now, the airing of this podcast. Mm -hmm. Although like the Michael Meisner story, it has a sort of an earlier beginning. Right. And it has been going on for 10 years or more. Well, let me just start. Okay, go ahead. After I had done the interviews in the the Tampa Bay Times, or what was then called the St. Petersburg Times. Now, Mike, was this uh, the first interview that you had done when you left Scientology, the C organization, as an employee? Yes, it was, Leah. Okay, so you did an interview with the St. Pete Times, now the Tampa Bay Times. Correct. Okay. And, And it was for the very extensive series. The Truth Rundown. Yeah, there you go. The yeah. truth rundown. See, I'm getting old, Leah. No, I'm we all really are. Old. But Mike, here's the thing. I have to ask you a question. You cannot find that too easily. Why is that? Because like most other media, the Tampa Bay Times has put stuff that is archival uh-huh. into where they keep it is you have to have a subscription. Right. Why not make so, it available so people can see it? I mean, it's just so stupid. But anyway. Can you because find they're it? trying to make money to stay alive. <laughs> hey, Mike, so can you put this? Do you have those stories somewhere on your blog? Can people find that? I will endeavor to get those links. In any event, yeah, I did a series of interviews, and that th- there is a backstory to that, too, which is originally I had not wanted to participate in those interviews. They were interviewing Marty Rathbun, and he and some other people, and... The reporters at the time, Tom Tobin and Joe Childs, contacted me and said they'd like me to confirm information that Marty Rathbun had given them. Mm-hmm. And and Marty Rathbun s- was a former senior executive of Scientology as well. Yes. And, he was and the, one of your closest friends. He was, yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. And he had been involved in a lot of the same things I had been involved in dealing with external matters for Scientology. And And he was also abused and beaten. You got it. Great. And I had originally not agreed to to, uh, be on the record, but they they sort of begged me saying, we don't have anybody else that that can confirm some of this information that Marty Rathbun is telling us because you and he and David Miscavige were the only people there. Right. So you ultimately agreed. So- Ultimately, I agreed after the the private investigators who were living across the street from me reported into David Miscavige that I had met with these people who flew to Denver to see me from the Tampa Bay Times, and then Miscavige dispatched Monique Yingling, the lawyer, his personal lawyer, another lawyer, Tommy Davis, and two other people to Denver to try and stop me from talking to the Tampa Bay Times. And when that happened, I said, okay, I'm now going to talk. You can't come and try and threaten me. They told, like Monique Yingling was saying, do you ever want to speak to your children again? You know, you don't want to go to war with Scientology, blah, 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 blah. And I was like. So Monique is the mouthpiece for Scientology. And Monique is threatening you that you're not going to see your children who are employees in the Sea Org of Scientology, if you speak. Correct. Also spent money on getting a house across the street from you and hired PIs just to watch you. Correct. In fact, Leah, those two private investigators have been paid in excess of $10 million by Scientology. Wow. To follow Pat Broker, who was a former Scientology official, for 10 years before they were put onto me. Wow. Okay. Yep. So I, I know this this story is almost as crazy as the the Michael Meisner story in some respects. The next thing that happens, Leah, is the article comes out, and then Joe Childs from the Tampa Bay the St. Pete Times at the time calls me and says, Mike, I have a, a, a very unpleasant question to ask you. 
and I know what the answer is, but I have to ask you. I just got off the phone with Monique Yingling, who informed me that you are such a horrendous person that when your son was diagnosed with aggressive skin cancer, you didn't even want to know about it. Do you, Mike, know that your son, Benjamin, has aggressive skin cancer? And I said, Joe, I had no idea. He said, Monique Yingling told me this and told me that you refused to even talk to her about your son or see him or see your ex-wife who had flown to Denver in order to inform you of this. So, Mike, before we go any further, the whole purpose of this is so that they throw away your story and don't report it because... We're telling you this guy is so disgusting that he didn't even want to see his son who has aggressive skin cancer. Had you known that your son had skin cancer at this point? No, of course not. And they didn't even mention that. Monique Yingling never mentioned that supposedly Kathy was in Denver. I had seen my ex-wife. Another Scientology employee. A Sea Org member, in fact. Right. Yeah. And and she supposedly flew all the way to Denver to see me, but then never called me. Monique so Mike, did. So Mike, when they all <laughs> when they all met with you to try to silence you in the beginning, did they ever mention it then? No. Oh okay. there is no mention of this. So now Nothing. they're pretending. Well, that didn't work. They're like, now let's pretend that we all concerned Scientology Sea Org members. Only flew out to Denver, not to harass Mike, not to silence him. Let's go with the story that we were alerting him to the fact that his son has aggressive skin cancer. Correct. But that was a lie. That was a total lie. So you but told the story Joe, gets worse. So oh jeez. <laughs> so after getting off the phone with Joe, yeah, I go, okay, I need to go and see Benjamin. My God, this is alarming. You're so, fine. yeah. Yeah. So, Marty Rathbun and I, who happened to be with me at the time, mm-hmm. go to the Fort Harrison Hotel in Clearwater and approach the front door. And I say to the security guards and the private investigator who's standing there, I would like to see my son, Benjamin. Mm-hmm. I have been informed that he has cancer and I am here to see him. They tell me to leave the property, get off their property. And they will call they, the police. And they call the police. They yeah. issue a trespass warning on me. Wait Six a police. <laughs> I thought, is Mike, didn't they want you to see your son, Ben? Um, well, apparently not. Didn't apparently Ben want wasn't... to see his father? Apparently not. Why is that? Because he was being surrounded by four people from OSA who were making sure that he didn't walk out the door. Two days later, I was taking Christy, now my wife, to the doctor's. And I was sitting in the parking lot of a doctor's office in Clearwater, Florida. And this is a very secluded location, by the way. It's like way... You can't see it from the road at all. And I'm standing in the parking lot talking to John Sweeney, a reporter from the BBC who was doing a show on the Panorama program about Scientology. Actually, it was his second show because I had agreed to speak to him after having represented Scientology in his first show I was now talking to him about what really was going on and what had happened in trying to prevent him from doing that first show. In fact, trying to drive him crazy, literally. Right, right. And that's what you were doing as part of OSA when you were in, when you were in the sewer. Now, interesting, can Pete, this is an amazing show, by the way. Can people see this? Because I thought this was fantastic. Oh yeah, you can absolutely see it, and I will put. I have links on my blog. I'll put great. them on the great. the great. Uh, fairgamepodcast.com. Great, 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 great. great. Um, okay, 
So you're in the so, parking lot talking to John Sweeney, your former enemy, right. and a former recipient of your fair gaming to right. of him, right? Okay, you're on the phone with him when which, what which, happens. Which, by the way, Leah, yeah. I just got to tell you, John Sweeney and his producer, Sarah Mull, have become very good personal friends of mine. Yes, in fact, I know. John flew from England to come to my wedding. Oh, so you're on the phone okay. with Sweeney, and I say uh, at a suddenly, doctor's appointment for your wife. Uh huh. Right. Uh -huh. Suddenly, I see three cars pull into the parking lot, and who is it? Out of the cars comes my ex-wife. Now, how long have you been divorced at this point, Mike? Well, actually, I had not yet been divorced. And oh. the reason I had not yet been divorced is though Scientology had filed the divorce papers on behalf of Kathy to divorce me, the instant I left, mm -hmm. they hung on to the divorce case because they were getting regular, I had to provide regular updates about my financial status. Mm -hmm. Where was I making money from? What was I doing? Who was I in contact with? And, this and they was were all, using this yeah. as intelligence gathering yes, yes. until finally the five-year time limit ran out and the judge said, okay, I've had enough of this. Okay. so No, she, but, but this is four years after you guys separated and you hadn't seen or talked to her since. Right. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Actually, three, Leah. From okay. 2007, June to now it's April 2010. So she never had contacted you about your son and your daughter who were in the Sea Org. Your children who were in the Sea Org never contacted you once you left Scientology and spoke out? Not once. And you have a message to them on your blog and there's been no contact? Correct. <clears throat> and not by you, Mike. This is because of the policy of disconnection and fair game they believe, because they were raised by Scientology, not you and Kathy, that they cannot talk to you because you're an enemy to mankind. Correct. Got it. Yes. So out of these three cars pop two PIs, my ex-wife Kathy, my daughter Taryn, my brother from Australia. So you Andrew. haven't heard, and you didn't hear from Andrew either when you left Scientology, right? Nope. Are you okay, Mike? Do you need anything? So nobody, nobody's contacted you. You and they flew your brother from Australia, right? Okay. And along with those people mm -hmm. was four officials, senior officials of Scientology: mm -hmm. Jenny Linson, the mm -hmm. former wife of Tom Devocht, daughter of Art Linson, brother of John Linson, I mean sister of John Linson. And Miscavige Pitbull, she is has literally become a like a, uh, a a shrieking devil that is. is oh, Jenny's the one. Jenny's the one on the video where she's at the airport <laughs> uh, confronting Marty Rathbun, going, "And nobody gives a fuck about you." That one, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. And, please, everyone, and, please look this up. Please look Jenny Linson up at the airport confronting Marty Rathbun, former senior executive. But that just epitomizes who she is and who Sea Org members are, really. Right. Yeah, go ahead. And and she is the first person you hear because when they started approaching me, I said to John, John, you'll never guess who just showed up in the parking lot my ex-wife and I go through and I start listing these people and yeah. and he he was already recording the call right and suddenly the screaming starts and it's Jenny Linson who is the the main source of the noise that emanates yeah. from these people but yeah. anyway the other people were Guillaume Lasserve, who was the supposed executive director international of the Church of Scientology International. Who has not been seen in public in how many years, Mike? Uh, many years now. Okay. I don't even know. Who else? David David Bloomberg, a former rugby player from uh, New Zealand who was one of Miscavige's enforcers, mm -hmm. and Sue Wilhair from the Religious Technology Center. 
And don't what know is, why Sue Wilhill was there. Can you tell me what the uh, what the Religious Technology Center is, RTC? Re- Religious Technology Center is the organization that is headed by David Miscavige, who calls Got himself it. the chairman, chairman of, the of the board, board yep. Religious Technology Center. Okay, go ahead. These people start, they approach me and start screaming, stay away from Benjamin, stay away from Benjamin, you motherfucker, you piece of shit, you blah, 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 blah. And I mean, these, are, these like, are religious, these are people who represent... The top, top tier of Scientology, like you said, the Religious Technology Center and the Church of Scientology International. Correct. Gotcha. The, the ultimate Scientologists. Gotcha. And practicing you know what? Practicing the ultimate of Scientology. Well, here's what's funny. You know, people can see that and they go, these are raving lunatics, right? Um, yeah. We see it and we go, that was us every day. Yep. Th- this is normal behavior. For Scientologists and Sea Org members, just just so everyone knows, right? What yeah. what's so abnormal about this is it was caught and recorded, uh, right? Exactly, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> right. That, that's and they're so screaming abnormal. at you, stay away! You're destroying your family. <laughs> screaming, carrying. I have never heard anything like this, Mike. Like right. I mean, pop, like you're saying, that was recorded, right? Yeah, and I I even said to him, I'm recording this. Uh, yeah, the BBC is on the other end of this phone. I think they thought I was just pulling their leg or something. Uh, yeah, trying to get them to uh, go it away. had to. It had. To, they had to believe that because I mean to to be exposed in the way that they were exposed. But I guess you know because you know that is probably behavior of of you know of a psychotic or or somebody who is you know a sociopath. They don't see their behavior as anything. Uh, abnormal. Right. Yeah. Ab- All right. So exactly. go ahead. Exactly. So, so Mike, so, so they're, yes. they're, they're carrying on. They basically, this was to what? What is the purpose of this particular action? Intimidation. Right. So that like, you would, you so know, that you would stop talking to the Tampa Bay Times. You would not show up to CNN. You would not show up to uh, see Benjamin or your daughter, Taryn. Like, th- so this was all to silence you. Correct. Uh, and that was the only purpose for it. Right. And no other, no other reason. So, would that imply that? So, for the last three, four years, Kathy, you haven't talked to Mike. You haven't had your kids call Mike. Your kids haven't called. You have tried to see your children. You have tried to call your children. We all know they will not take your calls. They will not see you. And you know, you could see that video again of Mike trying to see. His son at the um, in Clearwater, Florida, uh, and Mike. They, well, you have no relationship with them, but not that you had any when you were in. So this is all part of this farce to appear as though you left your family and then just kind of and just moving on with your life. And that's not the case. What it was to simply just silence you because they can have a contact with you. You would love contact with them. You would have your son Benjamin and Taryn live with you and Christy and your boys. I mean, you would welcome them with open arms. You would help Kathy if she wanted to leave the Sea Org. You and Christy would help her, as well would I, as well would anybody who is out there, because we understand why she's doing what she's doing. Correct. Absolutely, Leah. The story gets even more bizarre because... Ultimately, I then tried to get in the car and leave and just drive away from these people because they were like completely crazy. Yeah. And then a big tussle ensued. Well, they tried to keep the car door open. They took my car keys. They threw the car keys across the parking lot so I couldn't leave. They tried to prevent me from getting in the car. And then when I finally forced my way into the car, they pr- tried to prevent the car door from closing. And the ruckus that is going on is astonishing it's like this screaming and well if you hear if if you guys listen to this recording that that will be on the the website you'll you'll understand i mean i i get it mike it it's hard to listen to it's so nuts and you just have to remember these are employees you are members of scientology it's so easy to write them off as just crazy people innocuous people who you encountered in the middle of the street somewhere who are on crack or some shit you know what I mean? No, these are 
Sea Org members, highly regarded Sea Org members in the Church of Scientology today. Right. Go ahead. Right. The, yeah. Yeah, the, yeah. They're not the lunatics walking down Hollywood Boulevard with a shopping cart. Right. Which is what right. they sound like. Right. 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 In yeah. any event, the doctor then hears the noise and comes out to find out what's going on. And I try to make my way into the doctor's office. And she said, should I call the police? The doctor and John's, said Yeah. And John yeah. Sweeney also said, should I call the police? And I said, absolutely. Yes. As soon as I said, call the police, mm -hmm. and they heard that the, the sh sheriffs were going to show up. Mm-hmm. Jenny Linson, Guillaume LeServe, and Dave Bloomberg took off. They jumped in one of the cars along with the two PIs and vanished. All right. When the sheriff showed up, long story short, they talked to me, they talked to the doctor, they talked to my brother, my daughter, blah, 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 blah. And at the same time the sh sheriff showed up, also uh, a paramedic showed up because Kathy had a graze on her arm. Mm -hmm. Like I think from trying to hold the door of the car door open. Sure. But I, I don't know how it happened. Okay. They take all the statements and you know, the report from the sheriff's department. And I'm, I'm actually going to say uh, the conclusion was that these people intentionally followed me, Mike to the doctor's office and confronted me. Although Catherine did receive an abrasion on her arm, the injury was likely caused during incidental contact while Michael was attempting to move away from the group. Right. And the reason I read that is because it's very important in understanding what then happens. Sure. And there is a also a report from the paramedics mm -hmm. where they treat Kathy for the graze on her arm. Okay. And she gives the, the they in the report, it says the pain level is a two out of 10 and she refuses to be transported to the hospital or to get any further treatment, they put a gauze around her arm and that's it. Now, if you look, since that time, Scientology has accused me of being a wife beater, uh, having broken my wife's arm. Even having a Scientologist doctor do a video saying, confirming that that is true. Right that I'd broken her arm, that mm -hmm. I had caused her permanent neurological damage for which she requires surgery and will never recover in, in, her, in the rest of her life, et cetera, et cetera. So I have become like the, the person who has caused grievous bodily harm but to my ex-wife. But you didn't ex -wife. even have any contact with her. As the police report says, there was... Incidental. There was yes. incidental contact that caused an abrasion on her arm. And that has been turned into, I physically assaulted her and caused her permanent neurological and physical damage that she will never recover from. So Mike, but now in the video, looks like you had, somebody had gone after Kathy in this parking lot with a machete. Like, Hacked her arm up. Right. Yeah. It's insane. It doesn't even look real. I mean, it is bad effects. Bad. Very bad. Very bad effects. But they hope that people won't bother to look and find out what really is going on and right. what really happened, but they'll just take this for what it is. And in part, it's for their own internal audience. Right, it's like not really this, for... This stuff is not for, you know, investigative journalists to go use because any investigative journalist is going to shoot a million holes in it in a second. It's for yeah. them to be able to tell their Scientology people who may see the aftermath or have read something in the Tampa Bay Times or whatever, oh, well, here's the real story about right, and here's the, this Right, so it's the fair game for anybody in Scientology. It's right. to discredit you and that you left, that you're saying you were being beaten, that you were being abused, that you saw abuse in Scientology under directly by David Miscavige. And this is their way of, you know, having Scientologists like me go, 
well, wait a minute. How many people have left and said the same thing about David Miscavige? Well, let's show you. They're the people that were doing it. And Mike's a, you know, a wife beater. And so that didn't particularly work, Mike. So so nothing came of that um, other than, you know, it's pretty disconcerting. And, you know, people say, well, somebody walk up to me in my car. You know, when it happens to you, it does have an effect on you. It is, it, especially what you've been through, Mike. People have been going through your garbage for years, have been filming you for years, have been detr- trying to destroy you for years by moving into houses across the street from you, by videoing you everywhere you go, by having you, uh, uh, they, they have websites up, up at you, but trying to destroy your career with, you know, when you were first trying to get on your feet, they tried to destroy that job just so that you had no financial support and that you would go running back to Scientology. Um, so this has been going on. So this had no effect. So now what they did is they turned your daughter against you. I mean, this now we're, we're taking you now to most present fair gaming right. of Mike. Okay. Mike's daughter, who once again, hasn't heard from her has showed up. Ha- I guess they decided at one point, Mike, they tried to jump on the me too movement. Um, but they realized uh, they didn't know what that meant and what it was about. Correct. But right. they now saw an opportunity. Right. Now, they your saw... daughter's name, we should say, is not uh, Rinder. Right. She she got remarried to some person that I don't know. Her name is now Taryn Teutsch. T-E-U-T-S-C-H. Right. Yeah. And and she has become the the face of this Scientology campaign mm-hmm. that they are now running called Justice for Mum. Right. Which is, like you said, they tried to tie into the Me Too movement originally. They saw that as a great opportunity. You know, anybody will take and, and jump on the bandwagon of a woman that steps forward claiming that they have been abused in some fashion. Right. Well, first she tried to say that you abused her as a baby, right? Uh, yeah. And that didn't get much uh, movement. And then they, then Scientology decided, well, let's go to this other movement because a daughter pretending to be her mother's advocate and champion, that's like a button that's being pushed right now in the WOG world, and the WOG is a derogatory and, by the way, racist term that L. Ron Hubbard came up with to describe non-Scientologists. So, you know, they use it every day. Like, oh, that's WOG medicine. We don't subscribe to WOG medicine. Oh, that's WOG law. We're above the law. So just so you know, that is a term. So they are using this purposely, right, this WOG thing, think, Right. That, uh, you know, the parent and the mother. Meanwhile, Kathy's not raised her daughter or Ben. Neither has Mike, admittedly so. Scientology is the parent, and Scientology is the primary caretaker of not only Sea Org members, but even people like me, just Scientologists. My mother sent me to Scientology if I was smoking cigarettes or having sex or... You know, I got sent to Scientology to be reprimanded. And this is the how Scientologists are raised. In our parents sent us to Scientology to be raised. Same, right. e- even more so for Sea Org members. Um, they, you hardly ever see your child. Correct. So this campaign now is what she apparently does full time as her job in the Sea Org. Right. She literally works with, with, our old buddy Ed Parkin and the Stand League, the Scientology front group that stands up for religious freedom Supposedly. and freedom of speech unless it impacts on them. Right. And she goes around and has inveigled herself into, and this is another Scientology tactic, mm-hmm. into other organizations. That are doing the real work. Yeah. Pretending that she is just like them. So she goes and has her picture taken with the district attorney for Los Angeles County, Jackie Lacey, the woman who was responsible for prosecuting Danny Masterson, Mm -hmm. and with Gretchen Carlson uh, uh, because she was, you know, a famous 
founder of the Me Too movement and right. various other organizations and groups mm -hmm. and pretends that she has a legitimate cause. And she and is actually speaking at these events. And she is, it is so insane. And this is part of the fair game tactic. Infiltrate real organizations that are doing the work so you appear as legitimate. And that is what Taryn, your daughter, has done. So the survivors thought, you know what, we're going to start to show up to these events because these events are for people like us. And and up to then, they were scared to, quite honestly. And I'm sure a lot of victims feel that way. Um, they just see themselves as victims and not survivors. And and so they continue to do this type of thing, Mike, where they infiltrate real organizations pretending to be victims. And that is why we continue to speak about it, because people need to actually know how far they will go. They, they, they know no bottom. There is no bottom for Scientology or Scientologists. People ask, like, you know, how can people like your daughter and also, like, you know, everybody who's done a hate video about me that I considered family of 35 years, you have to get into the, you know, I guess the you have to understand the mindset. This would be the brainwashing to its fullest to, to justify heinous acts is they believe they're doing good. They think... They believe they're justified in breaking the law, in lying, in doing whatever they have to do to save Scientology because they believe that Scientology is man's only solution. Correct. That's what's so sad about this. Yeah. Is, you know, I look at my daughter and my son and I see what they do and they say, and unfortunately, I understand it. Right, because you, you know, were because you were that person. So was I, Mike. Right? I know. Yeah, and, and they and, also and, don't know you. You know, you don't know each other, Mike. I mean, I know right. that sounds really awful, but you did not raise your children. They were not raised by Kathy. They were not raised by you. It's 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 something that people have to understand why Scientologists are so easy to attack. You know, my father, who wasn't even a Scientologist, did a video about me. He hated Scientology his whole life. But again, my father didn't raise me. Right. Right? So it's easy for him because my father's, you know, was a narcissist, an egomaniac. I mean, my, my dad probably had mental problems, um, but it was still heartbreaking Uh that I didn't get a chance to, because I, even though I say these things about my dad, you know, I loved him uh, in it, it, that they used him against me when he wasn't even a Scientologist just goes to show you. I mean, my friends of 35 years, JC Francis, I considered her a sister. I was the godmother to her babies and for her to come out and, and call me a racist. I mean, I, I don't know how many more stabs to the heart, you know what I mean? Like, I'm just kind of left speechless. But like you said, Mike, we don't particularly like to talk about ourselves so much because people have received so much worse. Uh, maybe not in your case, Mike, but certainly in my case, I you know, I understand that the job that I've taken, uh, undertaken and the task at hand, I am susceptible to... You know, my friends saying horrible things about me, people that I love just say horrible things about me, and I, I have to accept that. But where it comes to survivors like the Danny Masterson survivors who are being fair game today um, and this type of activity happening where your daughter and Scientology is engaged in these campaigns, Justice for Mom, it'll continue, guys. It'll continue, but the more educated you can be, the better. Because if you work or volunteer for one of these organizations, we want you to be aware of what is going on uh, with Scientology. And their intention is not to, uh, is really to just get their own video <laughs> um, and infiltrate uh, just to, to further their own, their own means. So anyway, guys, I mean, that's all I have to say today. Mike, do you have any more? No, I, I, it's just... What's valuable about this is yeah. what you just said. Yeah. 
Yeah. We need to educate people. And the right. reason we continue to talk and do this show and do anything else that we do is so yeah. that people understand what is really going on yeah. and so that we can bring these abusive practices ultimately to an end. And I hope that we have taken another little step towards accomplishing that end with this show today. So thank you for listening. Until next time.